Hey, this is AI Shajib. Welcome to my first video on YouTube. I've been a blogger for the majority of my life, but I am now making videos on YouTube to push myself out of my comfort zone. Uh, I can generally talk about gadgets for hours, so this channel will be about photography and tech for the most part. And what better way to start the channel than taking you through the tech that I use on my desk every day. So without further ado, let's get started. The best place to start is the work desk, which you can see behind me. This is a motorized desk from a local shop here in Dhaka called 99 Grid. If you have watched enough videos on YouTube, chances are you know how they work. Simple up and down buttons to raise or lower the desk with some presets built in. I work from home. I've been working from home for the last seven plus years. So ergonomics are pretty important to me. Sitting down in front of a computer all day isn't good for your body. So I opted for this motorized desk so that I can stand up and work when I don't feel like sitting down all day. Motorized desks aren't plentiful in Dhaka, so it was pretty expensive. But I think any expense is worth it if it's going to help your health. On top of the desk is a 16 inch MacBook Pro with M1 Pro. This is one step above the base model with 1TB of storage. The base model only has 512GB. I got it recently and I have been in love with it. As anyone in the Mac world will tell you, Apple changed the game with its M1 processor. And the M1 Pro takes that even further. I have used this MacBook Pro to batch edit huge raw photos on Lightroom. I have also edited 4K videos on Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve. It just powers through them like it's idling. I have a high-end Windows gaming laptop, the Asus Zephyrus G15, with Ryzen 9 processor and RTX 3070 laptop GPU. I captured gameplay videos on the laptop and edited them using DaVinci Resolve on both the Windows laptop and the MacBook Pro. The Windows ran dangerously hot and loud, while the MacBook Pro didn't even make any sound. I don't want to turn this into a Mac vs Windows uh, debate because they both have their places and that's why I have them both. But the point is, these M1 and M1 Pro chips are ridiculously good. And if you are on the fence about buying one of these, don't think, just go for it. Because it can take pretty much anything you throw at it, except maybe gaming. For the monitor, I am using a 32 inch 4K LG monitor. This one's called the LG Ergo because it comes with a table mount instead of a stand. The benefit of that mount is that you can adjust the monitor around with ease. It also takes up significantly less desk space since the actual contact point at the table is all the way at the back. I have a second 27 inch 4K monitor also from LG but it's not an Ergo model. I bought that first and then upgraded to the 32 inch. I still use the 27 inch monitor from time to time, like right now that monitor is on the right side. Uh, you can probably see the reflection of the monitor on my glasses. The cool thing about these monitors is that they support USB-C. This means I don't have to connect my peripherals to the Mac. I have the dongle for the mouse and the keyboard connected to the USB ports in the back of the monitor. Then. A single USB cable goes into the MacBook Pro. This charges the MacBook Pro and connects those peripherals so that I don't have to connect anything else directly into the MacBook. This is especially useful when I'm swiping out the MacBook Pro with the Zephyrus G15. When I want to play some PC games, I just swap the MacBook Pro with the Asus laptop, I connect the USB-C and I'm good to go. I don't have to do anything else. I do need to connect the power adapter to the Windows laptop since Windows laptops need to be plugged in in order to run at full power. Macs don't need that as they can run on full power even when on battery. As you can see, being able to connect a single cable and have everything connected to the Mac is of great advantage to me. You might have noticed this custom mechanical keyboard that I'm rocking on my desk. It's a Keychron K6 with Gateron Yolos inside. I got into mechanical keyboard during the pandemic in 2020. I've experimented with quite a few different switches and keyboards. At one point, I had seven different keyboards with different keycaps and switches underneath. But I pretty much lost all interest in experimenting any further after I stumbled upon the getter on the yellows. 
They are extremely smooth linear switches that make beautiful sound when typing. It's funny because when I was researching mechanical keyboards, I was pretty damn sure that I would I would forever need blow switches that make beautiful typewriter-esque clicky sounds. But now I'm fully into getter on yellows and I don't even want to try anything else. It's surprising how much your preference can change once you have had the chance to try different switches on your mechanical keyboard. For the mouse, not much to say here. It's a Logitech G304 mouse. It doesn't have Bluetooth and it takes a battery, but I still like it because it's very very lightweight and uh, the 2.4 GHz dongle means I don't have to switch between different devices. As I mentioned earlier, the dongle is on the back of the monitor, so whichever laptop I connect the USB-C cable to, the mouse is connected to that as well. Now you couldn't have been watching this video without noticing these two, these two beautiful uh, light sources. They are Philips Hue Play lights and uh, I love them. In fact, my room lights are also from Philips Hue. So I can control the lights from any of my phones, Android or iPhone and any of my Macs. The great thing about accessories that work with Apple HomeKit is that you, you add them once to your iPhone and they are controllable from all of your Apple devices. So your iPhone, iPad, Mac, Apple TV, everything can control those Apple HomeKit supported accessories. So if I'm on my living room with the Mac and my mom wants to enter the room when the lights are off, she can turn them on since the physical switch is always on. I don't have to reach for my phone. I can open the home app on my Mac and simply turn on the lights. Similarly, if I have left the home and remembered that the TV is on, I can use any of my Apple devices to turn it off. This works because the TV is from LG, which supports Apple HomeKit as well. The main reason I got the Hue Play is to have some sort of background light happening. When I'm working on my desk, I feel that sometimes it helps to keep a warm light going in the background. So they are always facing the wall and lighting it up to give me a backdrop uh, when I'm working. And when I'm watching a video on the monitor, uh, I can sync them with the Hue, Hue Play with their sync app on the Mac the lights will change color depending on what is being shown on the monitor. So here is what it looks like. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Besides those two Hue Play lights, you'll see a pair of HomePod Mini. I bought them because I was lazy. I have a JBL Charge 4 speaker, which I think is the best speaker money can buy, but I didn't like that I had to turn it on every time I wanted to play some music. Also, because it only supports two connected devices at a time, I found myself needing to pair and unpair new devices all the time. Now that the HomePod Minis are here, I can play music or videos on any of my iPhone, iPad or Macs and airplay the audio to the HomePod Minis. They are stereo so they work together. They sound great but not better than the JBL Charge 4. But I am willing to make that compromise for the convenience that I get. My biggest complaint with the HomePod Mini is that they don't work as well with the Mac. I mean it's ironic that they don't given that they are both from Apple and they are supposed to just work together but there is often a significant delay. I have to play pause a few times to get that delay sorted out but it's still a thing that bothers me. But you know what doesn't have this problem? The AirPods Max. The AirPods Max is overpriced, sure, but I love this thing. 
because you can't beat its convenience see that's the thing about apple and the so called ecosystem right things just work better together i had the bose qc35 2 i loved it it was comfortable and the sound quality was great but it was always connected to my iphone so if i was working on my mac and i wanted to use the headphone i would have to either use the bose app on my iphone to switch the audio to my mac or i had to pair it completely as a new device as a new bluetooth device with the airpods max or any airpods for that matter they just work as long as you are logged into the same apple id they will be connected almost always automatically when you move them to a device that you are working on even if it's not connected automatically you'll see a prompt that lets you connect to the airpods on the top right corner of your mac sound quality and noise cancellation are both great on the airpods max i bought it mainly because it felt more comfortable to wear long term over something like the airpods pro which goes in ear and it can be painful sometimes to wear the airpods pro for a long time with the airpods max i haven't found any discomfort so far the last thing on the desk if you don't count this fake plant that came with this expensive motorized desk is this microphone it's a fairly cheap chinese microphone that i bought because i wanted to make tutorials and i didn't want to hold anything it's on a stand so it works hands free but the new max have studio quality microphone so i don't even use that anymore it's mostly just sitting there or i should say standing there the audio on this entire video that you are hearing is recorded on the built-in microphone on the 16 inch macbook pro do they sound professional maybe not but would it work for someone just starting out like me absolutely there are a couple of things that aren't always on the desk but i use them so i thought i would mention them as well the first thing is the epson printer it's an ink tank color printer that i use for printing documents and for photos yes i print photos from time to time if you are a photographer even a hobbyist one you should try printing your best photos there is something very satisfying about physically touching a photo that you have taken that feeling can't be matched by anything on a computer no matter how big the monitor is there is an ipad pro and an ipad mini 6 that i sometimes end up using on the desk i have dedicated videos coming up with these two ipads so please subscribe if you are interested in learning about the ipads how they fit into my work and how both the ipad pro and the ipad mini can work together so that's it that's the desk setup for the year 2022 Um, I don't know how long things will be like this. There is a Mac Studio that I have been thinking about integrating into my t- setup so that I don't have to disconnect and connect laptops all the time. But I'm not sure if that would work because I have a laptop PC as well. So if I were to connect the Mac Studio and use the USB-C to that Mac Studio, I would have to reroute that back to the laptop every time that I wanted to play some games. So it will probably stay as it is right now for a long time but if things change significantly i will make another video with the updated desk setup sometime later this year i'm also working on creating a room tour video for my room because there is a lot going on in terms of gaming and entertainment in, in my room uh, but i don't want to make this one a 20 minute video me of me rambling about everything that i have so if you are interested in that room tour or entertainment setup video make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that out thank you for watching this video feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments or ask any questions you may have about anything that i've discussed today so see you in the next video till then stay safe and have a good one